So listen, if any of you guys are thinking about doing your own podcast, man, I highly recommend you use Anchor. Anchor Anchor.fm. It's free. You know what I mean? It's got all the tools and stuff you need to make your stuff sound spiffy. You know what I mean? It's it's seamless. It's it's user-friendly. You can record it from your phone. You record it from your computer. You know what I'm saying? If you want it to be on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or anything like that, it'll do it for you. You know, you can make some money, you know what I mean, doing a sponsorship ad and just like something like this. And it's also free. So if you're interested in it, man, you can download the free Anchor app or you can go to anchor.fm. Good luck. All right, folks, back in the lab, back in the studio, Captain's Log Podcast, episode 29, special guest, Jonathan De La Cruz. What's happening, brother? What's happening, man? Thanks for having me, Leon. I appreciate it. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, bro. Look good, man. Thank Look you, good. You, Looking sharp, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, man. Trying to stay in the gym, you know what I'm saying? Stay active. Who you telling, man? I'm doing CrossFit, man. CrossFit. That I shit actually, is, that shit is kind of, it's hard work, man. How long you been doing that for? Shit, two, three months, man. I don't know. I'm going to do it probably to the spring and then go back to cycling or something, man. Yeah, I, th- I feel like everyone during this COVID situation, man, got a little home gym set up and they just try to figure you know, figure out how to get back fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. a you lot of time to kill, man. I actually set up a little boxing gym in my Yeah, you got to you gotta, you gotta pick up something, man. How's your family? My family's good. My family's good. Um, You know, got an eight-month-old son. My wife is good. What's so his name? His name is Jalen. Jalen. Congratulations. Shout out to Lord Jalen. Yep, yep. Thank you, man. It's how's my first boy. How's it? Really? Oh, okay. How's the wife? The wife is doing good. She's just, man, you know, being first time mother, too, just like me. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm first time dad, but, you know, first time parent. So uh, she's busy with him, busy with me, clean up after my mess, after his mess. You know what I'm saying? That's so your first kid? Yeah, first kid. Shit man. feel good, don't it? Yeah, we about to have our anniversary next month. Mm, 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 so mm. six years, brother. Welcome to the club, man. This Thank is, you. You gonna love this dad shit, man. Yeah, th- yeah, man. It's been so fun, bro. It's been such a big blessing just to wake up. You know what I'm saying? The first thing I see is him. He sm- he's smiling. You know that's the first thing he does when he wakes up is give him a big old smile. You so. getting any sleep? Uh, it's getting better in the beginning. Yeah. It's tough, man. <laughs> so he's eight months now. So he's just starting to sleep through the night a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Okay, you okay, know. okay. Well, man, um, brought you on the podcast. I know we had talked previously. You know, you want to come on here and, you know what I mean, drop some drop some gems for the people out there. For sure. So, man, tell me your story. Tell us your story. My story, man. So Jonathan De La Cruz, I was, I'm actually just turned 33. Uh, today is what, the 23rd? So I turned 33 last uh, last week on the 17th. Um, I was born in Silver Spring, Maryland. Moco. I, yep, yes sir, yes sir, Silver Spring, Maryland. But I left out of here when I was 11 years old. Okay. And I moved down to Miami. So. How was I, that? Man, it was wonderful, brother. Florida is Miami. nice. I'm over. I'm over. And not just Miami. I lived on on Miami. I lived in Miami Beach. So my middle school and high school was on the beach. I'm more of a Fort Lauderdale type of guy. Maybe 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 because I'm older. Okay, yeah, I could see it. I could see it. Miami could get a little crazy. So imagine being, imagine middle school, high school, growing up on Miami yeah. Beach, man. That was that was a little wild. Yeah, I'll take a little bit. Here you go. Take a little bit. Thank I you. Got, that's why that's why I keep two glasses. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Okay, Appreciate so you. keep going. Yeah, so imagine that uh, Miami Beach, man. You know, on on half days, that's what we used to do is go down to the beach, brother. Imagine spending the rest of the day on the beach. Um, it was good. Um, so I did seventh grade, eighth grade over there. Single mom, so as you know, growing up with a single mother is not easy. It was just me and my mom. You know, we had tough times. I remember times where we open up the fridge, nothing but a half a gallon of milk, Mm -hmm. some water. You hungry here? Is take the food stamp card and go get some, get a subway at Publix. You know what I'm saying? Because you could buy cold foods. I was a ooze noodle baby. Trust me, I know it, bro. Tough man, but it was it, it it built me up, man, to uh to be who I am today. I met some. Lifelong friends, you know what I'm saying? So people that I still stay in touch with now, I feel Miami is like a second home to me. Um, How often you go now? Uh, I'm probably like every other year. We try to go once a year, but, you know, I was there last year. And then before that, it, w- it was probably like two years. But we stay in contact. You know, sometimes they come up here to visit me. And uh, right now I have an aunt that lives out there. So Okay. Yep, yep. So what happened was in eighth grade, um, I finished eighth grade, and then mom and I were kind of going through some hard times. And I ended up having 
come back here to Maryland for half a school year. Mm. Um, what school I, you I went to? Springbrook. Springbrook? Yeah, so Paint I came Branch. back. Yep, yep. Paint Branch, Paint Branch, baby. Paint Branch, baby. You know, Springbrook, man. I didn't have anything against Springbrook, but it was just like, it was White Oak. You know what I'm saying? And back then, you know, coming up, you know, I'm like two years older than you. So White Oak was kind of like, White Oak and Castle Boulevard was like the, you know, be careful. You know okay, what I'm saying? So, so my dad, my dad's house is in Oakview. Okay. So that's that's where, um, you know what I'm saying, I lived, and that's where my so father still right lives, So you're right in the man. mix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm right in the mix, man. So I came back ninth grade, half a school year. I didn't make it through the whole school year because I didn't want to be here, man. I was just, I did terrible in school, bro. I barely went to school. I didn't. I barely made it through the week in school, mm -hmm. and I was just kind of like I was going through a phase where I was 13, 14 years old. I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to be here. I, didn't, I left all my friends at home. Stage. Yeah, 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 I was, yeah, I was yeah, being yeah. rebellious towards my father. And my, I remember my grandmother coming to throw water on me to get me to go to school, and that wouldn't even <laughs> get my butt up. Um, but, you know, I left half of the, you know, in the middle of the school year. I went back to Miami. I went to Miami Beach Senior High School, you know, um, and over there, it was still kind of more the same because now we're friends. They're skipping class. So basically, ninth grade, man, I flunked the whole year. And if it wasn't for me in, in my sophomore year, the counselor basically offered me to go to a program, which was an alternative school. Yeah, yeah. I forget. What was the name of that joint? Uh, oh, you're talking about down in Miami? Down in Miami, Okay, yeah, yeah they had something like I left, that. I left, I left Maryland. I went back to Miami. I didn't even make it a whole school year. So uh, when I got back, Ten, my, you know, my 10th grade year, they, they offered me this program. It's called Ombudsman. Mm. So on the books, and if you look at my history, mm. it doesn't look like I went anywhere else but Miami Beach Senior High School. So it was kind of like an off-campus situation. Yeah, It was probably a room, bro, to be honest, probably two times as big as this or just as about as big as this between, you know, one or two of these. And it was just on the computer. So we'll have all our subjects on the computer. And it'd be from 7 in the morning to 10 in the morning. And that'd be my day. That's it? Three As hours? As a 15, 16 kid, year old kid, that man. Sound so like, that sounds like it's setting you up for failure, it, man. Yeah, man. It was terrible, bro. So I'd, I remember I'd do that in the morning, get home. And then um, what really kept me out of trouble, though, was was uh, boxing. Mm. So I started going to the gym consistently, you know, five, six days a week um, yeah, in the city. keep you sharp, man. Yeah, you yeah. You stick man. with it. I mean, it's... It's it's really a, a type of obedience, you know what I'm saying? In itself, if if you really really into it, you know what I mean. And you know what I'm trying to yourself this. It definitely man. teach teach you how to be a man. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's the, I mean, it's a it's a great sport. So I actually uh, grew up in boxing. My father was a professional boxer here mm -hmm. in Maryland. What weight? Uh, uh, featherweight. You know, one thirty, one thirty five. You know, he was he's a little guy. So that's but that's, that's what the, boxing got is. Got the heart now. of a lion, though, ain't, baby. Ain't no, ain't no more heavyweight boxing. You ain't know? nobody getting knocked on their teeth like that no more. Not yeah. a heavyweight, man. Right? Yeah. So so um, you know, so that really kept me out the streets in Miami, man. You know, we used to hang out, whatever. Miami's even for, for teens at that age. I used to go to all ages clubs, brother. Mm. All ages clubs at fifteen. So that's I had no business. And then we talking about all ages in Miami. It's just a different scene, bro. So you was wild. Yeah, yeah, it was a wild time. But it was, f and then and then my mother, you know. Um, so when I moved back, my mother was kind of still with the boyfriend, and so I'd be by myself most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then my spot was always kind of like the hangout spot. And then I'd also take my mother's car in at nighttime. So I used to take a car, oh, drive over to the block, cause. I used to hang out in Miami Beach, but I lived in Miami across the bridge. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I used to take the car, go to the block, whatever. Have my fair share of run-ins with the law over there in, in, in Miami. So, um, as a juvenile, mm -hmm. got arrested uh, four times or three, four times. Yeah, four times. You felt like, you, I mean, you felt like you was doing the things you was doing because it was like a cry for help or you just, you know, you just like. But you I never doing. got it. So, I never got arrested for me, like, going out. I've always been a thinking kid, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, I never was into drugs, you know what I'm well, saying? You, what, you didn't, never smoked nothing like that? No, nah, no, nah, never you smoked. You didn't smoke in high school? Not, not a no, never smoked, because I was Ooh. in boxing. I was like an oh, athlete. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like, so I was okay. a real athlete. Like, I used to train hard. I used to be sparring grown with men, mm -hmm. like 15 year old kid, 16 year old kid. I'm boxing 30 year olds. It was tough, man. So I used to, um, I never, I never got into the drugs. Uh, my thing was girls. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like a ladies That's man. A girl too, you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. I was like the ladies man, and I'm in the boxing gym, and you know, and me being like one of the only kids with a car, because my mom would give me the car at 15, 16 years old. We, you know, they riding with me. We going, we going to the parties, and 
you know, the, so the times I got arrested was more for fights. Like um, the first time, Fighting well, well the first time I was 14 years old and uh, I got caught stealing earrings. I got talked into going to steal earrings. I used to wear earrings at 14 mm. years old and I got talked into going to, to a department store to steal some earrings. Imagine, I used to have hair. So I'm going to, to a department store looking all suspicious mm. with a backpack and hair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We walk out with the with the earrings. I'm thinking I'm, you know, coast is clear. And then one of the, you know how they have those undercover people that. Oh, um, yeah, them at loss prevention. Yeah, yeah, the loss prevention. They outside waiting for us, man. Mm -hmm. And um, one big old guy grabbed my, my, my friend. And then this little old lady grabbed me, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and we got caught up. And that was that was the first time. Yeah, you know that you know they be knowing they they know i mean it's it's just like well, do i really want to deal with this today or not you know what i'm saying but lps be knowing so, so and then the other times were just really just um i got jumped went to all ages club and um and you know i'm i, I used to be the guy i didn't like to be just on the wall you know you go to the club with your boys and everyone's just a bunch of dudes. Oh, you, oh, you ain't wanna be. You wanna be hugging nah, the wall. I'm going. On, nah, I'm going. To trying go to go party. Yeah, trying to go find you. Know, I'm, I'm party. <laughs> I'm trying to go give me have a good, good time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you so trying to grind on something. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Got up in the mix into the crowd. And there was this dude. Just I don't know if he was drunk or what he was. He was like pushing everybody. He pushed me, and I looked at him like, why? You know, why you pushing me? He didn't even talk, bro. The first thing he did was he hit me. Boom, hit me in my nose. And at that time. I used to wear contacts. Mm. So the first punch I'm knocking, one of my contacts is falling out. Mm, so you know what I'm saying? So now we rumbling, and then I'm getting hit from everywhere. So now I'm getting jumped. Security kicks me out. And then outside is two of the guys that were inside jumping me. And then uh, I'm fighting them. And then the police end up tasing me. Where was your mans at? Uh, no, so inside, they were all rumbling. Everyone's rumbling oh, okay, now. They find out it's me. Oh, they, you know, it's him. So, you know, my little brother was in there, bro. My little brother's 12 years old. He was 12 at the time. Mm. So it's just crazy. I, I look back now as a 33-year-old man. You sometimes, you ever look back at the Hell things yeah. you did? Like, how? You know, I, and now, you, now you're a father. You know what I'm saying? You know, I never, I never, to be honest, I didn't, I never really got in a fight. I was always silly. You know what I'm saying? So I yeah, never yeah, had yeah. no problems with nobody. But I was always there when it happened. And I'd be like. Bruh, like, that's tough. I was bro. like, do I gotta jump? I was like, don't make me do something I don't really want to do. Cause I was small, yeah. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, okay. I was small guy. I didn't, you know, I didn't really have my growth spurt until like 10th to 11th grade when I grew like probably four, five, six inches over the summer. I probably was like five, like five, three or four. Okay. And then when I got, I ain't too, I'm not too much taller than you. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm five, six, yeah. five, seven. So. But when I came back, was like five eleven, you know what I'm okay, saying? So okay. I was like, it was like, what the fuck? I was like, I mean, grandma, grandma cooking, you know, spent the summer with grandma, came back home tall. I also, you know, had me a little little girly over there, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, maybe, maybe, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I'm dealing with something, so it just started to come out of me. Like, all right, now you're a man, let's get taller, you know what I'm saying? So, but um, I mean, it just, but just like me though, I never really went out to try to look for trouble. Nah, you me, know what me, I'm neither, saying? me neither. Me neither. I never been that dude. I never even instigated a fight. No, you know no, what I'm no, saying? Never. So that. That situation right there was just, they just end up, I get, I got jumped. What happened, see, the thing they is, they tend Mi to do that. Like, Miami, Miami is a lot of gang culture. There's a, Miami's big, so yeah. there's like a lot of different neighborhoods, you know what I'm saying? You're from this area, that, I guess like anywhere else, right? So over there's a lot of gang culture, and us, we from the beach, and there's a lot of different neighborhoods. So we, and we're in a club that's in the city of Miami, so, but we're all together as the beat, you know, there's a lot of us, bro, that day, and, you know, unfortunately, I was the one that got hit with the taser for some reason. I'm fighting two dudes off. The police arrest me. So that was the second time. The third time was uh, me driving without a license. You know, I used to take mom's car. got caught doing that. Another time was, uh, you know, we're leaving, the, we're leaving the beach. We're in South Beach. We're leaving the beach. And then uh, we're driving home. And I'm driving. So I got, it's uh, about four of us in the car. And then there's another car next to us swerving. Throwing, throwing up gang signs, throwing stuff to the car. I trying to instigate a fight, looking for a fight. And I'm nervous, bro. I'm like, yeah, while driving. They literally swerving over to us. They throwing stuff at us, throwing up signs. They, like they just out looking for yeah, trouble okay, pretty that's much. People did, people, people did that over there, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, you know, they come from a different neighborhood, come and they start they trying to gang bang and look for fights for no reason. So... I'm at the red light, and I'm, you know, I'm thinking like, man, I'm gonna turn away from these dudes because I'm trying to avoid it. 
Yeah. I'm a thinking man. I'm not really out trying to get into trouble. You know what I'm saying? My mom always taught me to think of the consequences. So, you know, I'm trying to get away. And then when we stop, one of them dudes come out their car. So when he comes out, one of my guys come out my car. So now I'm like, oh, man. And then my guy at the, at the beach, he found one of those uh, police sticks. Oh, the batons. The no, the ones. Oh, the, the metal. Yeah, the metal baton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The metal jumps. Yeah, the ones that extend. Yeah. yeah. He found that at the beach, buried in the sand. <laughs> so do buddy come out, and then my boy come out. He does the, this whole, you know what I'm saying? Luckily, man, there was an undercover, not undercover. There was an off-duty police watching the whole thing. So y'all was good. He came out, boom, free. Yeah. They surrounded us like we robbed a bank, bro. You know, I remember getting handcuffed. Put my, I was, I was put in a ampow. You know. Ooh. And now that was like that, you know. So that was another situation which I try to avoid, but you know, it just happened. So this this just kept happening until when when when'd you come back here? Yeah. So this is kind of like this was basically, I guess, was uh, giving me more of a reason to leave Miami. So I left Miami after I graduated. This is all happened during high school. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Is I'm still in high school. So you come back up here as an adult. Yeah, yeah. I came. Well, I came at. I came back here when I. Yeah, after I graduated, I was seventeen. Okay. So I, as soon as I graduated, I moved back over here. Same summer. Um, but then I went. See, but then I went back to visit Miami. Now we in the club. I'm a little drunk. My brother's caught with a fake ID. Now, now I'm eighteen. I ain't going to the jack. Cause what happens in juvenile? And when you're juvenile in Miami, you get arrested you go to this thing called the jack the mm -hmm. jack is the juvenile assessment center okay where they just process you let you sit for a little bit yeah, yeah they let you sit and then from yeah. there though they okay you're gonna do 21 days you're gonna go here you know i remember the first time my mom was in the time i got arrested with the earring my mom was in new york so i was home alone for the weekend and she told me don't get into no trouble don't get into no trouble so that ended up happening they called her up and she told them people to not let anyone take me out so you had to wait till she came back. Oh nah, man! So what happens was they were gonna take me. They were on the way to take me to this group home situation for the weekend. Mm. And then as we were leaving, a friend, a friend's, m a friend of mine, her, uh, her mother called, and instead of driving me to the group home, they just drove me to her, okay. and they let me out, man. So tough, man. So all these things kind of gave me more of a reason to leave Miami. Okay. So I left Miami after I graduated, came here in uh, two thousand and five. Okay, oh five shit. I was in Iraq in oh five, man. Just, oh, just, really? just coming back. Yeah, wow. nineteen in, in the sandbox. You know what I'm saying? Nervous as hell. So you was you was in the actual war, like yeah, yeah. Like well, I was combat? In, I was in Operation Iraqi Freedom too. Um, I was artillery, so I was I'm not, I wasn't a front line guy. I was support. So to give you an example, you know, you infantry, you're a grunt. You you're a rifleman, okay. and you go on a patrol. Let's say you patrol in you know your neighborhood where you live. And your, let's say your neighborhood is 15 miles from here. This is where I am, right here in my house. And I'm set up, and I have my cannon set up that can shoot 30 miles mm. to wherever. And you go on to check your neighbor's house. And it turns out that it's insurgents in there, and they're making uh, IEDs, improvised explosive devices. And you're like, hey, we need to take out this house. You would call me on the radio and say, hey, this cord coordinate one two three four slash five six seven eight. Take it out, and we would go turn the gun like this, mm. bring it up like that, shoot that shit, and blow the fucking house up. As long as the coordinates is right. Mm. Now we will get some shit where it'll mess around, and we get them coordinates, and it's too far to the left or too far to the right, and then we adjust. Or let's say you're doing it in the dark, and you say, "Well, I'm gonna storm the house, but we need some light." And I'll be like, okay, uh, shoot, shoot to illumination. We'll shoot, and we'll shoot a big ass candle that'll float in the air for about 15 minutes that will light up the whole neighborhood. Mm. When why y'all do y'all thing? That's that's wow. what I did. Wow. And with that going on, we're on a base that we made in the middle of Iraq, so we got folks shooting like makeshift mortars trying to blow up our guns. Mm. You know what I mean? So just imagine you sitting there, you chilling on the couch, and all of a sudden a mortar come through your wall. And it's a dud that don't blow up. And you like, you get up and run. And the next one come through, boom. Mm. And all your shit get blown up. You know what I'm saying? And one of your friends takes some shrapnel on the leg or something like that. Mm. You know, just do that for six months. Damn. 
There's an 18, 19 year old. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, like you didn't even realize what you, you know, what you're going through. But that's a whole nother conversation. You know, at that age, man, it's crazy because you think you know it all, right? I, I, I you mean, know what I'm saying you know, like I'm in my thirties now, and I look back like that was a young buck, man. I thought. I thought I knew it all. You know, you think you're grown at that yeah. age. You know, we're still young. Mm-hmm. We're still developing. You know, we're still absorbing stuff, man. Mm-hmm. It's just but you know what's crazy? So, you know, for what you've told me so far about, you know, you get kind of getting into shit a little bit. Wrong place, wrong time type deal. That's yeah. why I left. Yeah. Because I felt like, you know, I'm not going to college. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know nothing about money. Like, you know, single parent as well. Mom. And she just did the best she could to make sure that, you know, the lights was on and there was food in the refrigerator. She couldn't teach me how to be no man. She couldn't yeah. teach me about finance. We never had no money. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I'm like, well, I got to go somewhere where I can learn this shit. You know what I'm saying? The military is not the place to go to learn about no money. It's just to go to become whatever you're going to be. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to go, you want to be a man or you're going to be a fucking pussy or you're going to be a crybaby or you're going to be go hard or you're going to be alcoholic or you're going to beat your wife or you're going to kill yourself. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Cold hard facts. Military is rough. Back, I don't know what it is now. They got stress cars and shit now. But back when I was in, and it was even worse before my generation. You know, I'm a, I'm a digi baby. So that means like the digital camis that they wear mm-hmm. now. I was one of the first groups to get those. Before that, the guys were wearing the old style woodlands, the ones you got the iron, mm-hmm. you know, with the old school fucking starch. You got to pour that shit on there and the shit to be tight. You can set them shits up like they stilts. Mm-hmm. You know, I was a digital guy. You can pull them out the dirty clothes and just wag them and put them on. So we had to deal with that. But um, that was kind of the reason. I was like, well, I don't want to. I don't want to turn into something because I I was at a point where I already couldn't be controlled. You know what I mean? Once I hit 13, 14, I was doing whatever the fuck I wanted. Yeah. I was respectful. You know yeah, what I'm saying? But it's yeah, like, but it's but like, you if, thought you knew it all. Yeah, yeah like but it's like, up your own it, it's like, it's like, it's like, well, if I want to stay out late, that's a whiskey. If it's like if if I want to stay out Move. late, yes, it's good with a cigar. Okay. So it's like if I wanted to stay out late, then I stayed out late. If I want to go to a party, I was going to a party. Now where I got the money to go for a party, it was on me. You know what I'm saying? I would borrow from a friend or something like that. But my mother knew she knew I was smoking, she knew I was drinking, but she was just like, you know, w- w- what can I do? I just I I it's like I I think we both knew that there was nothing that she can do, but I still try to be as respectful as I could, and that's why I was like. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm going to go yeah. ahead and go here. I was like, you know, we're in the apartment. Like, you know. I mean, you know, they're in, the, they're in your high school. Did you get recruited or was it something that? I got recruited, that, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I signed up as early as you can. I, I was in 11th grade. I was you, in 11th like grade. Were those guys that go to your high school, like they're the recruit? Well, I like, knew what. So, or did you already, is it something in your family? Did you have nah, family nah, well, my members father, in your... My father was, he's in the Army, same okay. job, weird, didn't know that. Oh, really? Uh, no, right. I didn't know. I would tell I was like way in and out. But, um, Did you pick that job, or was it? Well, when you score low, you know what I'm saying. Okay. You know, when you score low on the ASVAB, you don't get okay. you don't yeah. you don't get that many choices. Okay. So it was either infantry, tanks, uh, AAVs, or artillery. So damn. So you're telling me they they put their lowest scoring people in those positions? Yeah. Oh, the, really? all the, the, the well, you know, marine. Yeah, you know, yeah, every yeah. you know every marine is a rifleman. Yeah. But okay. infantry is like that's the lowest that's the lowest job you can, that you can have. Where you just mm. go out and your primary job is to you go on patrols, and nine times out of ten, you're going to be killing some people. Wow. And then, you know, go to Intel and all that shit, the, the, air, the aircraft, air wing guys, they're, they're pretty high up. Huh. But it, it, ain't, it ain't hard to, to teach somebody how to yeah, shoot, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That don't really require too much. Not knocking them. I know I, uh, some good guys that was infantry. But, yeah, you, I scored a 32. The lowest you can get is a 31. Hmm. So, you know, um, I did that, and I left. You know, came back, you know. Four years. Four years. One and done. That's what we call it. One and, and done. And it's crazy. I went to Japan after, a couple months after I went to Japan. Japan was cool. Um, Good food. Good God. Like that hib- really? this hibachi shit and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It came from there. Yeah, for sure. I know. Yeah, it's so, Japanese. So but before hibachi was a thing here, this was back in 2005 and six. Like, oh, been that's like their carry out. That's what they do. So, that's like, the that's like their carry out. So, we would go on a little joint, and I'd be like, let me get let me get two uh, shrimp rices to go. One shrimp, one one uh, crab rice. They make them shits right there, just the same way as if you was in yeah. a restaurant, but just a small pot and a little rundown shack, and you hook that shit up, and it tastes just as good as it do now, even better over there. And they got their own little special sauces. Like, we got mumbo sauce and shit. They got their own shit. They won't tell yeah. you what's in it. <laughs> and I mean, it was cool. Like I was just there for the food. Ever besides that, it was boring, because some guys, a unit that was there before us, they had like raped some raped some Japanese chicks. So we couldn't even leave the base. 
for like the first three months we were there, we couldn't even leave base, dog. Wow. And then after that, it's like if you had a green card, you was a sergeant or something like that, you could stay out all night. Besides that, everybody else had to be back to the barracks by midnight. There, nothing gets popping till midnight. So it's like if you want to be on the scene, you have to stay out until like 6 or 7 in the morning to come back on base. Wow. So it was just like, uh... Hey, look, we just going to chill. There. Everybody, everybody take a nap, sleep as long as you can. We're going to be out all night. You know what I'm saying? So we would do that. But, um, I mean, at least it opened your eyes up to some culture, man. Hell yeah. You know hell yeah. Saying? I mean, you, I met a lot of travel. cool people. Yeah. I, w- I wish I, you know what's crazy, bro? I wish I would have traveled more. Every chance I got, I came back here. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I just wanted to come home. And it's yeah, like. Of course, though. If you're done, you, 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 want, you miss your family. You know but what I'm see, saying? that was the thing, though. Like, this, I'll tell you my routine. So, let's say out of a month, I would come home probably twice a month. At, at when I was really, really trying to get up with Barry and Carlos and Glenn and them, I would come home twice a month. I would drive. I would be Friday. I would drive home, still have my camis on, heading up the road, get in the house, say, hey, what's up, mom? Hug, kiss, drop my shit, change, go out the door. She wouldn't see me till later that night. I would wake up in the morning, uh, probably about noon, get dressed, leave out, be gone, come back in, change, leave out again, be out all night. Come back in Sunday, hung the fuck over, take my shit and leave. I did that mm-hmm. shit like the whole time. And then it was just to a point where she's like, why are you even coming here? Mm-hmm. But I mean, we kind of never really had that. I love you, son. I love you, mom relationship. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. we do now. Yeah. I feel like she's kind of like trying to catch up, you know, kind of living through her grandkids. I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? But it still be kind of feeling weird to me. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. um, so let's just so. So you came back to Maryland. So, yeah, yeah. So I came back to Maryland and then. um. I still got arrested, man, when I was 18, and that was one time we was at the club. My brother got caught with a fake ID. This is in Maryland. This is Miami now. I'm back. I'm now visiting Miami. <laughs> I can't get away from Miami. Now I'm back in Miami again, and we in this club called Boulevard, mm-hmm. and, you know, that's where everyone used to go in Alapata, and um, and my brother gets caught with a fake ID. Hey, your brother's outside. They got your brother right now, you know, hemmed up with the police. I go outside to find out what's going on, but I'm drunk, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm intoxicated. Toasty. Cop starts talking to me all kind of way, and I start talking back all kind of way, and then we get to kind of scuffling, and then they threw him, they they uh they throw me in the in the back seat, handcuffed. First they slam me, they throw me in the back seat, and then my drunk ass, I start kicking the window, bro, kicking the window, shouting stuff at them, and they pulled me out again. This time they hog tied me, they you know you put tied your feet, they yeah. tied my feet and threw me back in there, and then like man, you keep going. Uh, we gonna mace you. We gonna mace you. So I just chilled, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna chill. But this time now, I'm 18 years old. Glenn, Glenn Arden, PD did that. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Plate and four screws. Same, yeah, same, bro, same I, shit. My whole, my whole joint was messed up. But you know, I was drunk. I was talking all same, kind of way. Same but, deal. It, but then I find out the guy that 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 was talking back and instigating also was like one of the worst cops. In that area of Miami, mm. you know what I'm saying. So he, so was, I ended he, was, up, he was looking for that. He was yeah, for I that. ended up going to Miami Dade County Jail, bro. This time, now it's not the Jack. Now I'm in County Jail. Ooh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And it, it's crazy because I pulled up my mugshot not too long ago, and you could see I'm like my eyes all watery. You know, I'm all crying, looking at the, you know, got my mugshot all messed up. Yeah. And uh, and man, that was an experience, man. I was in there for 18 hours. You know what I'm saying? And and that was enough for me to not ever want to go back to jail, bro. I, you know, I, real, I got friends real that, shit, yeah. yeah, I get, fr- I have a lot of, fr- I have some friends, you know what I'm saying, close friends of mine that they caught up in the system, in and out, and I don't know how the heck, bro. I did 18 hours, and I, was, you know, make sure I'm straight. Yeah. Okay. You know, it was that was a hell of an experience, okay. man. So, so when did you come back to Maryland, then you wasn't really visiting like that. I mean, or you no, nah, nah, I mean, I've vi- and I've always visited, but then I had a situation happen um, when I was 19 years old, um, where I went to the same club, right? And now we're leaving. We're leaving the club, and, and I'm with a couple friends. I'm in the back seat. It's four of us, and then as we're leaving the club, the you know one of the guy that's in the passenger side, he uh he starts like arguing with somebody on the outside. And then they um, you, we good? Yeah, and then I wanna, yeah, I, I know I know you're moving around. I just want to make sure you're good. Yeah, Go the um, the guy, yeah, they start arguing, and and then he tells them, "Don't make me get out the car." And then my the dude in the passenger side gets out the car, and I'm like, "Oh, you know what I'm saying?" I'm like, oh. <laughs> Like, oh, not again. You could like, you could just go to another spot, you know what man. What the so, fuck? Is this the place so to be? So he gets out. Uh, my boy that's next to me on the right gets out. 
my boy in the front. I'm like the last one to get. I'm like, man, I gotta, I'm gonna have to get out. I may have been the the, the, the second to last. I don't think I was the last, but second to last. But I was, you know, what I'm saying. Mm. I didn't. I wanted to avoid the situation, man. And then, you know, and I and I'm a little drunk. And then I know some of the dudes on the other side that's fighting us. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to go to the boxing gym in that neighborhood. Mm. That's why I, I was training at. And then um, so they're like on my my friend, and I go to try to like break them up. I go to to the right side over here, and then I move over to the left where my other guys at. And I'm you know, and I'm kind of and it happened so fast, bro. Somebody just clocked me, man, right here. Damn. Cold. I was out cold. Why you getting hit, man? What the fuck? What's going on? Yeah, so I got I got hit, but this time oh, I'm you out was cold. out. No, I'm out cold, bro. Oh, yeah, so you got gross. snuck pretty much. Yeah, I got I got hit hard. I, it, well, so I ended up waking up in my in the back of my friend's car with the like the windows were halfway down. Yeah. They're at the hospital taking yeah. another friend of ours that got hit with a bat that had a broken jaw. So okay. they 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 take him in the hospital and I'm actually in the back seat, but and I wake up like throwing up a little bit. I'm hurting, bro. I had a a huge headache. My friends ended up taking me, like, one of my friends had to carry me in the house. I couldn't take the headache anymore. I had to go to the emergency room. So they ended up finding that I had a skull fracture. Uh, so I had my, my right here is, is, is fractured. Like, I still have I still have a dip in my skull. And, um, and I was in the hospital for a week. I had a contusion, like, basically bruising on the mm. front of my brain. Um... In uh, encephal encephalomalacia or something like that. Mm. So that's like softening of the brain tissue. So I basically had a, a mild brain injury, bro. I went home with a mild brain injury from this hit. And I, I lasted a whole week in the hospital, you know, with these terrible headaches. I couldn't even see, like, light. The Where light would bother me. Yeah, yeah. It was terrible, bro. So um, that happened, man, and at the same club. And um, I think after that, I may have... I probably put my brakes right, on, so man. Yeah, I need to take bit. a little break. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So that happened, man, and um, and and from the res- I mean, I, due to that, I can't smell. So I actually messed up an olfactory nerve, and I can't smell. Like I don't have a sense of smell. You can't smell nothing. No, nothing. So you can't smell that. I get like the essence. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, it's whiskey. You know the little yeah, the, uh, but I can't like I can't really make out. Smell. So it's like if you cooking or something like that, like you don't even like you, yeah, you like nah, so you can't bro. be upstairs like. Mm. All right, all right. Let me put it to you this way, my son. I had my son yesterday, I think, or two days ago. You know, my son's on my. <laughs> yo, Why do I already, know where you going? You already with this? know where I'm going with this. <laughs> my son is laying. He's laying on his stomach on my lap. I go to rub his back. I take out my hand, and my hand is all full of his poop, bro. Oh, I didn't smell any man. of that. So, yeah, that was due Ain't to that, nothing they can do about that? Nah, it's just a nerve. It could, I don't know. I don't, you know what I'm saying? You missing out. Yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm missing out. So that happened, too, bro. So so at this point, remember, I'm still living in. I'm Now I'm living in Maryland. Okay. And I have a brother. I don't know if we mentioned that. I have a brother. What's uh, your brother's name? His, his name is Rigo. Can I have a medal? Maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you've seen did. him. I probably did. I'm sure you've seen okay, him. Okay, okay. Shout out so to brother his, man. Yeah, his name his name is Rigo. So me and my me and my brother always been close. So when I, while I was living in Miami, my brother used to always come and visit during the summer. He was here during, the whole time. Yeah, he was here. Okay. He went to Springbrook. But when I moved back in 05, we switched because he had, he got into a little beef over here. And like I remember getting home one night and there were like f- three, four cars full of dudes waiting for my brother. Like in f- in the driveway, I think they're I don't know what high school they're from, maybe Blake or I don't know, but you know what I'm saying, kid stuff, man. So a bunch of these dudes on my driveway, my grandma's all scared. Yeah. So my brother already had a plan, a trip, uh, a trip plan over to go see my mother. Mm. So he ended up staying. So we switched. So '05, he moved to Miami. I moved here. He finished graduating the same high school I went to okay. in '08, and uh, and then he moved back. So from 05 to 08, I'm just here. I used to, uh, my first job was at Underground Station in Wheaton Mall. <laughs> I remember that little job. Yeah, that was my first job, bro. When I was that was a spot you. low key. Yep, yep, yep. So I was there. And then after there, I went to Radio Shack. Remember the Radio Shack across the street from Wheaton Mall? Mm. Little small joint. And not ringing a bell, probably. Though. So I was there for a little bit. And then after that, I, w- I worked at Comcast. Okay. So I used to work all, um, 
Montgomery County, West Montgomery County, Potomac, Stay Gaithersburg, Rockville. That's why I was doing the jobs. And then um and so so this was I was nineteen years old working at Comcast. So seventeen to nineteen, I did Underground Station, Radio Shack, Comcast. You were moving up a little bit. You were moving yeah, up. I was Comcast moving up. Was hey, nineteen, I was getting paid like seventeen an hour. No, Comcast, you know what I'm saying? Hey, look, if you was doing Nin- some shit like that at eighteen and nineteen, you was the man. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was a tech though. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. even called. I was a tech. Yeah, I was out there. My own job, yeah, my band. Yeah. You was the man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was doing my thing, man. And um, and it was just me. My thing, my thing was dancing. So my my thing was at that age, I would go out on the weekends. It's Dominican place. I'm Dominican. My mom is is from El Salvador. My father's Dominican, but I grew up like you know in the Dominican culture, dancing salsa. Oh, well, so, so okay, I'm gonna say so. It's bachata. Yeah, yeah, bachata. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, knew, I, knew, I was in Sur with a couple of cats. Man. They, they used to love it. They used to dance their ass off. Yeah, and so, you like, know, Dominicans it. love to yeah. dance. So my thing was uh, just work. And then on the weekends, I go to the spot on 14th Street. In the city? Uh, yeah, in the city in D.C. called Johannes. It's like on 14th and Decatur. Okay. Johannes, okay. Johannes. Okay, okay. So, so go, that was my little spot, man. A little hole in the wall, a little small joint. You know what I'm saying? Do my little dancing. And that was that was that was my my thing. And my brother moved back in 08. You know what I'm saying? And uh, my brother was is younger than me by almost three years. Okay. So I'm you know 08. I'm what? I'm like 19, 20 years old. I'm 20 years old. Yep. Um. And then he's he's back. And then he started bringing like some different vibes to my house. Cause my thing was I used to drink. At 18, 19, I'm drinking now. You know, I was, you know I was drinking at 16. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm a drink. And, you know, we're drinking. We go out on the weekends. So my, 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 I never really chill with, like, no grimy dudes, no, like, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't really into no street stuff. I was, you know, I was that was my thing. Just dance, work, my girls. You know what I'm saying? That's it. So when my brother moved back, you know, the vibes kind of changed. Um, that Miami got to him. Yeah, 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 he's always been a hustler, though. You know what I'm saying? My brother living here with my dad, he's always had kind of like a hustler mentality. You know, up here, they were big with sneakers and stuff. At Miami, we some Miami, we some, some Miami kid. We not really into all that. You know, we would just, it, think diff- they, they, it was different. They, Montgomery, Montgomery different. County big on fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, t- t- he had till, a hustle till, to get till his till money. Till this day. And, till this day. You know day, what I'm saying? So he, and, then, and then moving to Miami when we did the switch, you know what I'm saying? Now he's back with a single mother. You know, things ain't really get much easier with my mom so now he's kind of going through what i went through you know um so when he came back some different kind of characters started you know what i'm saying coming around my house and um so now we in 2008 and 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 then me on the other hand when i was working at comcast i started getting into uh watching these late night infomercials you ever see these late night infomercials they're like they're in a Flip houses with none of your cash or credit, and da 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 da. Mm-hmm. So I started watching this. Um, you heard of this guy named Dean Graziosi? Nah. He's one of those, you know, late night infomercial real estate guys. So I'm like, man, you know, I started having like bigger dreams, right? And it, it really started with this book called Think and Grow Rich. You ever read that book? Nah. Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. It's, it goes into like the mindset and the psychology of people that. Are successful and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So like so a Dave, like a Dave Ramsey type deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a motivational, personal Motive. development. So my mom was always into that stuff, right? She so, you know, she so she kind of like piqued my interest into that and and introduced me to this book. And then um, I read the book. My mindset started changing, and then I started getting into these infomercials. I'm like, I want to learn real estate. And I'm at Comcast. You know, I'm doing the installs, and I'm telling my boy, watch, I'm gonna do that one day. I'm gonna do that. So, um, yeah, so I'm like, yeah, my mind, you know, my mind just started changing. I got out of this, uh, kind of a toxic relationship at the time. Um, you know, got out of that. So I started just really focusing on me and kind of like what I was going to be doing. So I ended up leaving Comcast and then, um, I left Comcast. Now I'm like out of a job. I try to flip my first pound of weed. That shit was it wasn't for me, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't, a, I wasn't, it just wasn't for me. tough job right there. Yeah, that was, my, my girlfriend, I think, got rid of that joint, you know, quicker than I could, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? She had all the customs, but that, it just wasn't for me. And then I ended up, uh, ended up getting a job at Southern Management, you know what I'm saying? Leasing apartments. Uh, Ken Village, you, you familiar with Ken Village? Mm-hmm. 
So I was at Kent Village, man, leasing apartments. Yeah, googly moogly, go back some memories. Yeah, man, that was my um, and that was my second attempt trying to get that job. All right, so now like, now I'm kind of like, I want to do real estate. I'm trying to get into that field. So I'm thinking, let me try to property management, leasing. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's a good I'm start. young, That's trying a good to like, you, you, I'm trying to put it together, you bro. You trying to get familiar you know, with or, or the other industry. You I know come from a, a, I'm I'm a first generation American. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So. I'm first generation. My parents are both immigrants. Although they came here at a young age, my came, my, my dad came here when he was 15. My mom came here when she was like eight years old. But I'm first generation, so you know I'm trying to learn. I'm just trying to move and trying yeah, to see you, how to you, get you, it. You trying to? You, you, you know I'm you, young. You're I'm like, to, what am I gonna do with life? You trying to set a foundation? And yeah. I, I didn't I didn't mention I, I I did go to MC at the time too. So when MC. I was working at yeah, the 13th I went to, uh, grade baby. Yeah, yeah you go. <laughs> it was even, look. It, you either went to MC. Or you went to Allegheny. Yep. It was only it was only two colleges, so man. I did that MC, was it, man. I did MC for a little bit. I, I did that while I was at Comcast, and then I kind of like I want to do real estate, and I left MC. I, I was I was like 45 credits in. I just left, bro. I want to I want to do this. I start because I started going to these seminars and like you know what I'm saying. I bought this. I, I remember maxing out my credit card, and I bought this. Uh, you know course and stuff to learn real estate and all that so 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 back to the late night infamy that really got me started man i got this book um and then i started learning I, I used to first you remember this how this uh the show called flip this house mm -hmm. i used to I binge watch that show sim similar to that now yeah, yeah now but uh, the original flip yeah. this house with uh stan merrill and these people like i used to binge watch these shows man and this is at age what i was 19. 19 so yeah, yeah. You, if you're thinking like that at a young age you already you always already set you yeah, couldn't be, you couldn't be told old. nothing else. You you want to work for yourself. Bef so my my birthday's in December, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and before my twentieth birthday, I came across wholesaling because I I thought that you had to, I thought you needed money for real estate, right? I thought you, like these guys, well, the guys that were flipping houses, they were actually buying, renovating, and selling. I thought that was like the only way to get into real estate. So I'm like, man, you probably need a bank loan, you need credit. Like I'm trying to just navigate and learn and then i started you know googling and learning and researching came across a guy named uh preston ely mm -hmm. and I, I got his ebook you know so the ebook mentioned how to flip houses with no cash or credit by basically wholesaling houses and just flipping the contract so you're technically not flipping the house so now i'm like i'm gonna wholesale this is what i want to do you know what I'm saying? this how this is how i'm gonna get in the game yeah. So now I'm 21. I get my birthday come in December, January 2009. I'm like, let me go ahead and get my real estate license. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get. My, I'm gonna take the course. So I took. I, I took the course in January. It's a one month course. It takes uh, 60 hours. And um, so my my roots. And then I also decided I'm gonna start boxing again because I you know I used to box, but I took the time off from the time break. I was 17 to 20, 21. I took a break from that. You, at this point, you just trying to stay busy. Yeah, bro. And I was trying to get out my dad's house. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah. I, like, like at that moment, like I said, my brother was bringing, he was young, bringing some, you know what I'm saying, bad some vibes bad vibes to my house. Yeah. And another thing I didn't touch on, my dad at that time had a habit, you know what I'm saying, with uh, with, with uh, cocaine habit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So the people he brought around the house wasn't too good. Just so wasn't, like wasn't safe my plan, bro, my plan at that time was like I'm gonna get an apartment with Kent Village. They're gonna take my rent out of my check. I'm already leasing. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of was already setting that up. That's good. I mean, you know, you, you definitely, you definitely, you definitely sound like you definitely made a, a, a 180 from them from them uh, yeah, first yeah, couple well, years. Well, you know that, well, that was in Miami. That's the whole reason I left Miami because yeah. I knew like at that age, 16, 17, like kids, they they don't really get much better if you in that. If you're doing on yeah, that yeah, route, yeah. and so now I got friends right now doing, you know, 20 years, and you know what I'm saying, and it's just, it's just, you know, I, I, I left that, I left that, cause I just knew, although I've always been a thinking person, but just like the times I did get in trouble, mm -hmm. I was just around, right? Yeah. I wasn't looking for it, but so, um, so yeah, so so, um, where was that? Oh yeah, so I, I'm, I take the course. I'm, I'm, this is January 2009. And uh, I even formed my company, Quick Solution Home Buyers. So, and then I get back into boxing, like I mentioned. So my routine was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 
I go to Sugar Ray Leonard Boxing Gym. You familiar with that? Mm -hmm. Over there in Palmer Park. Yeah. So and then Kent, Kent Village is down the street. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I, you know, I go in my tie, my shirt, go to the boxing gym, go to the, you know, uh, change in the locker, and boom, do my thing. My brother, my little brother, used to meet me there. So we would meet at the boxing gym and train together. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays, I was doing a real estate course. So I was like working full time, going to the boxing gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and going doing the real estate class Tuesday, Thursday. I ended up passing the real estate class. I'm done. So now it's Monday. Uh, now we're in February 23rd, 2009, Monday. And um, Pacific day. Yeah, yeah. So tw the 23rd. On Monday, I'll take the day off because I need to prepare for my, uh, I passed the course. The next step after you pass the real estate course is to take the PSI exam to get the state license. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I got, okay, I'm going to set up to take the state test on Tuesday. Monday, I set up an interview with a broker. You know what I'm saying? Because so after you get your real estate license, you need to then affiliate with a brokerage. Yeah, so Monday in the morning, I meet with the broker. The broker is a real estate investor. He does exactly what I want to do. I'm like, boom, I'm in the money. Like, I'm going to you know what I'm saying? He's going to take me under his wing. I'm going to be licensed. He's going to teach me how to wholesale properties. He's going to teach me how to rehab properties. Boom, this is where I'm affiliate after I pass my test. Right? So, um, so that's, so, so that's the morning. So, February 23rd, this is also around tax season. You know what I'm saying? So, I got a little money. I had like three thousand dollars. I'm also looking for a car. So after the interview, I go to look for a car. I go to different dealerships with my boy. My boy we used to rent a room in the basement. We were roommates. My room was in the basement at my father's house. That's that. That's that whiskey. That's, that, that's a whiskey on you. That's that whiskey. You got that hat on, so you can't really see oh, no, that. I'm, I'm, I'm sweating. No, don't even yeah. worry about it. <laughs> I'm sweating. Goddamn, that's what it do to you. Go ahead. So um. So now I get home, right? So I'm I did the interview in the morning. I go out, look for cars. My boy that rents a room in the basement. My room is in the basement at my dad's house. Uh, we get home, and when I get home, there's this dude that's at my house. I go to open my door, and he opens my door. He's, he's opening the front door to let me in. This guy used to live in my house the summer before. And he was no good. He's one of, you know, one of my dad's friends, and he just opened the door, like, my dad's a very uh, a good-hearted guy, man. He wants to help people. He's always open, you know what I'm saying? Like welcoming welcoming people to the house, maybe people that maybe shouldn't really be there, you know what I'm saying? So when uh this dude opens the door, I'm like, man, I get a bad I get a bad vibe like, yo, what's this dude doing here? What the fuck is you doing here? Yeah, yeah I'm like, yeah, what yeah, are yeah, you, yeah. what are you doing here? He's like a not a good guy. Um so come to find out, he was visiting from New York. Um, and then he was visiting from New York because he was trying to purchase uh, 1,000 pills of ecstasy. And he was looking for a connect, like a plug. Mm. He's coming to my house looking for a plug. Like, I don't, your, I don't know. Your pop, don't your pop do that. that type of information? Yeah, yeah, so, so, so he asking me if I know anybody, this, this, and that. And I say, no, I don't, I don't know anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm. I got real estate in my mind. You ain't, he's you, even, you ain't, you ain't he's even trying to shit. entice me. I'm like, you know, give me a little bit of money and I'll flip it and I'll give you double next week. I'm like, no. I'm thinking I got my mind set on everything. Like, I have my all my plans on what I want to do. I tell him no. I turn him down. So he proposes the same situation to my brother. So my brother, being the hustler he is, I'm thinking, you know what I'm saying, he's finding a, an opportunity to make a little money. He you know what I'm saying? It. He jumped on the opportunity. Uh -huh. And I remember, so his room was on the upper level of the my of my house, so my dad's house. So my dad's house is a Cape Cod. I don't know if you're familiar with Cape yes. Cod. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You yeah. got the the pitch roof up yeah, there, the and the pitch like roof one room is the, so is like is one a room, yeah, attic yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of room yeah, yeah. upstairs. So my room was in the basement. So I remember being up there, and he's like making phone calls, trying to set it up. You know what I'm saying, trying to be a middleman, I guess, or whatever, trying to make the transaction happen for buddy. And I tell him, I tell him, I was like, nah, man, you know, just chill, don't get involved. And then I go down to my room because at this point I got to study. You know what I'm saying? I got a test tomorrow. You got business to handle. Yeah, so I go to my business. room. So my, so the stairs, 
the stairs, you go down the stairs to the basement, my room is to the left. Mm-hmm. So I'm in my room at this t- at this time. It's like eight o'clock at night, and then um, at this point, my brother is at the barber shop. He's not even home. So now in my house is my grandmother, is me, is the dude that was looking for the pills, and then my friend that that rents the room in the basement. Okay, so um, I'm in my room with the I'm at a desk kind of like this with my with my. My uh, laptop open. I used to binge watch. Now my thing was, at that time, was webinars. I fuck, I'm on all kind of webinars, you know what I'm saying? Trying to learn all kind of everyone's strategy. and. You feel like you got something going on. Yeah, so I got the you, webinar. You, you need to be, and then stay so good. Yeah, and then I have the, uh, the real estate book open yeah. to study. I'm at my desk. So at that time, I, I left this part out, but at that time, my brother had a friend of his living in my house. From White Oak, your favorite place. From White Oak. God. From White Oak. You already know up to no good. Mm-hmm. If you live yeah, in White Oak, you up to no good. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, there you I'm go. I'm putting so it out there. It is what it is. Fight so, me. So he, so he's living in my house. Homeboy from White Oak. They known each other from middle school, cause my brother went to uh, my brother went to White Oak. Middle, no, he went to uh, Key. Okay, Key. He went to Key. Yeah, Francis yeah. Scott Key. Francis so, Scott. You know, they know each other from back in the days and stuff like that. It's my friend, you know. So he's staying at my house, but I noticed, like, he was kind of, like, hiding. Because every time we would go to White Oak to the McDonald's up the street, he would never get out the car. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was very suspicious to me. Somebody looking for his ass. You know what I'm saying? He's suspicious. Like, this dude is up to something. So, anyway, at that time, he lived at my house. But he wasn't in my house when, this, like, when at this moment when I'm studying, he shows up. He gets, he gets, he gets to the house. He comes in through the basement, right? But c- before coming into my room, he goes upstairs. Mm-hmm. Then he comes back down, and he's sitting with me. So now, I'm, and I used to try to put put him on game to what I was learning, because I used to follow this dude, um, and I still follow him, Kenny Rushing. He used to be a big crack dealer in Tampa, turned into a real estate mogul. You know what I'm saying? Still still to this day, still teaching and all this stuff. So I used to try to put him up and like, yeah, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm learning and stuff like that. Um, you know, you all, you know what's crazy? I wanted to stop you. You know, you, it's just like, it's just our natural instinct to always try to put your, put your mans on. Like, that's what I'm doing, bro. Like, you can get, you, you can get cheesed up, man. Get with me. But it's like. You just can't. I think it took me. It took me to this age. It's like you can't help everybody. Yeah, you know you what I'm can. saying you can't. You can't. As much as you want to, they have to want it. They, they have gotta to want it. It's hurt. like I feel like I don't want everybody. I don't want everybody to do what I'm doing because then, yeah. then, then it's like, well, what, what the fuck makes me unique? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, well, so ahead. he, so he ends up sitting next to me to my left, and then I ask him about the pills. I say, yeah, what, what's up with these pills? And he like. Like, you know when you look at somebody and they look guilty, like, you know something's up. So I look over to him, and he does, like, one of these. He's not even looking at me. He's, like, looking at the screen, and he does one of these. And then and then he tells me, yeah, yeah, my man's outside. Because at this point, my brother ended up calling him. He ended up calling people. He ended up calling his boy to see about the plug and find somebody that could bring it. Talking people about that shit. So he ended up calling these people. And um, so apparently what I think, because I didn't go upstairs with him, but before he came into my room and went upstairs, he let somebody else in my house, his man. You know what I'm saying? Because at this point, my grandma was in the room, so the room is, I mean, upstairs is, you know, no one's there. My, I mean, my grandma's in her bedroom. Um, So he comes sit with me. He says, yeah, my man's outside. And then, like, probably, like, a less than a minute, I felt someone else come in my room. So when someone else came in my room, I turned around. And when I turned around, I was in uh, like one of these uh, uh, desk chairs. Yeah. So I turned around in my desk chair, and then the first thing I look at, man, I'm looking down the barrel of a gun, bro. You know what I'm saying? And he's like just pointed it out my face, and I'm like, I'm in my PJs. You know, I'm caught off guard. I'm like. For what, though? What the, yeah. what the fuck you got to do with so, it? So, exactly. I'm thinking he came down because, you know, his friend sees he's sitting down with me. You know what I'm saying? Buddy don't know who it is. He's coming in. He whatever. So, he comes in no mask. Comes in. Where it at, cuz? And I stand up. Whole face. 
I stand up, and now he comes away from the doorway, and then he moves to the right. So now he enters my room, like right in front of my bed. And uh, he's and I turn to him, and he still got the gun to my face, like you know, pointed at me. And then uh, I think I said, "Don't shoot." To my right. Fuck that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, look, hey, look, you, you to, you to the side of the mic, man. So they, they might yeah. not be heard. Yeah, you might have to bleep, bleep that joint out. But anyway, right. buddy's over here to the right. Yeah, it's cool. Buddy's over here to the right, man. And then, um, and then I just, I just try to turn and run. So my thought process at that moment Get was the like, fuck out of there. yeah, my, it, it, to be honest, that whole moment from the time like I turned in my chair to the time like I ran out the room, a minute, like it happened quick, cause like, it was like a reaction, like an instinct, like just run, get out. Because I'm looking at the barrel of a gun, and he just got to pull the trigger, and I'm dead, you know, because it was pointed at my face, you know, and he's got no mask on. Like, what is his intentions? I don't know. So as I turned and I took a few steps, the he shot. He took a shot, and then it went through my shoulder, went through my scapula, and it hit me at T2, my spinal cord. So I, I got a spinal cord injury, and I, I freaking uh, right in that instant I dropped. I never lost consciousness, so um, oh, a buddy ran over me, um, and then um, and then yeah, the dude that shot me, he he put the gun on my head to shoot me again, and the gun jammed. So the gun, the bullet never came out, and he just ran up the stairs. So I ended up halfway of my body, ha- half of my body was in the hallway, the other half was in. Um, the other half was in the bedroom. I was like in the doorway, and then I was facing the stairs, so I could just see him going up the stairs. And then as he opened the basement door, my grandma opened the door, so he ran right past my grandma. And I could just remember seeing like my grandma running right past, like going back and forth, yelling. So the dude, um, b- my friend that you know lived in the basement, he ended up coming down the stairs with the police on the phone. And uh, and yeah, man, I remember just laying there, just. I automatically knew I was paralyzed, bro. Like, I felt tingling all over, like a big electric shock. I couldn't even move my arm at that moment. And I remember just trying to, like, work on my breathing, just focus on my breathing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just not panic. And then I kept yelling. I was literally yelling, like, I didn't want to die. I kept saying that shit. And and then the, the paramedics came. I remember them, um cutting my shirt and then taking me out the back door and then I was on the ambulance with the with the detective and then I you know I would tell the detective you you know what I'm saying you ain't had nothing to do with it you gotta ask buddy so and then I I remember getting to the uh and and by the way when I when I when I land like when I got hit and I was on the ground I was bleeding out my neck so the bullet that hit me was a hollow point and it, as it went in, it fragmented. So I had fragments. Like the entry point was my, the, my like the back of my shoulder. And I had fragments come out my neck. Like, you know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, man, I remember being going in and out in the ambulance. Like, you know what I'm saying? Getting weak. And and uh, and yeah, and then I woke up in the, in ICU. So I spent one month in ICU and then another month in rehab. You know what I'm saying? You just yeah. fucked me up with that, bro. Yeah, man. So I, you know that that shit was it was that that had nothing to do with nothing, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's so kind of like so you, you telling it's me choices, you bro. Life is about choices, man. So you, you got just never know. Some shit you ain't had nothing to do with it. Yeah, nothing, zero, zero. Like you know, you know they say you get these inst- like these vibes, bro. When I saw that man at my house that day. Like I had a vibe, like I, I get this weird vibe, bro. Like I had to just, I, I could, li- I could, I, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what it was, you know what I'm saying? Someone telling me like, "Yo, something's gonna happen." Like I had a bad, a weird vibe. And then you know, while I was laying there on the ground, my brother ended up showing up. My brother showed up. His little girlfriend showed up. This girl I was messing with showed up. And I remember the paramedics telling him to hold up because they were trying to come down the stairs. 
you know. And um, yeah, ICU, man, it's a lot. So then now I'm waking up in ICU. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm awake in ICU with a freaking neck brace on, with a ventilator down my mouth, with a freaking uh the tube to to feed down up you know up my nose. And um. And I'm just there, bro. And you know, I remember just having that feeling that 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 ventilator on, you know. So they ended up having to take that out because I was starting to get pneumonia. Cause from the bullet impact, my uh, my lung collapsed. You know what I'm saying? Lung collapsed. And um. <coughs> and they had to remove that out of my mouth, and I had to get a trachea uh, tracheotomy. A stick. Yeah. yeah. So, another crazy story, bro. During this operation, I freaking wake up. Mid mid surgery? Yes. What? Like the movie. You seen that movie uh it, it's been awake? A, it been a couple of movies where they had something similar like that. I yeah, I man. would definitely be fucking up, freaking bro. out. I woke up. I felt the whole pain, but see the thing is I woke my mind woke up. So they don't know that I'm awake. You know what I'm saying? They look at me, I'm not I'm out. Can't even bl- I can't even move my, you my feel eyelids. You I felt feel. everything. So I felt everything. Stitch me up. Boom, put that crap in there. Stitch me up. And then, you know, when you wake up from that, you can't talk. You know what I'm saying? Because the air doesn't come up the vocal cords. So now I can't even express what I just went through. You know what I'm saying? So that had to just write everything. You know, it just, ha- it just bro, I, I'm paralyzed from my chest down. You know, I use a wheelchair every day to ambulate. I'm sorry, yeah. So I'm sorry you, know, you had to go through that shit, dog. This this shit is crazy. Like this, the story is crazy. Really, I'm yeah. sorry you had to go through yeah. that, man. I mean, I mean, I I don't know if that means anything, bro. No, but thank I mean, you, bro. I'm, I pre- you know, I'm really like, like I said, I I think I may. Have, I'm I, blessed, man, to be alive, bro. I literally, th- there was a second gunshot that was to to meant to kill me, take me off this earth. So I'm like, I'm just, I just feel blessed. You still got purpose, man. It ain't they ain't the earth ain't done with you, man. Um, fuck. I would. I really wasn't expecting you to hit me like that. I thought you know what I'm saying. It's yeah, like, I'm, hey man, I'm giving it, it to you. It, raw, I know you man. gave. You definitely gave me raw and uncut, man. But I'm like, fuck, man. If you look, if you could see my expression when you was telling me the story, I was stuck. Like, what, dog? And it jammed. So, so you know, yeah, jammed, bro. I'm, you know, so, so, so you know, buddy, buddy, I was, you know, buddy that basically brought his friend over. You know what I'm saying? Um. He never came around. I was still in ICU, still in rehab, and they finally caught him, like a chase or something. But they caught him though. Nah, they caught, they caught my brother's friend. They didn't their, catch the shooter. Bro- nah, the never? shooter. Nah, because my brother's friend, what he said was that dude tried to rob him too. That the gun jammed when he tried to shoot him. Basically, the shot that was for me because I had a ball strap. I had like a ball mm, strap. Sound like sound like head. this nigga don't know how to clean his shit. So yeah, man. So the so since it was all circumstantial, the detectives really couldn't arrest him. I guess you know what I'm saying. Like, there's no hard evidence of that you had any involvement. So and they they're not gonna go by that. Yeah, Montgomery County didn't do too well, man. I'm not happy. I wasn't happy with. They're not gonna go by the fact that say I saw him shoot me. They ain't gonna go by that shit. You can anybody can say that. Apparent to them. Yeah. So he didn't give up the shooter. You know what I'm saying? He, He you know. Okay. So the shooter was out there, man. I don't know. He could be listening to this podcast right now. Fuck I love you, bro. Well, fuck him. So how long? So, okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunate incident, man. You know what I'm saying? You're in a wheelchair. Yeah, you know what I mean? now 2009. So, so I'm coming up on 12 years, bro. It's been a freaking hell of a ride. So how, so how were you mentally when you when they, when they, when they you realized, like, okay, I'm going to be in this fucking wheelchair? I realized the, the moment I got shot, though, that I was paralyzed. I'm talking. Like, you, never, you, you, you know when they say, like, Bro, that whole week flashed in front of my eyes when that sh- that whole shit happened. First of all, when I got hit, first I was like in disbelief that I was even going through that shit because I wasn't that, even that like you got shot. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? This is real life. Like so I'm you really didn't, you going didn't, you through didn't this. You didn't like ah, you didn't yell or nothing. Oh no, yeah, yell? I yell because if yeah, of course. But it's like no, no, in disbelief in the in the sense that I would have never thought that I'd even be involved in some shit. That would result in me getting shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
because I wasn't on I wasn't about that life for nothing, bro. I was not even involved with in trying you to know, do I, anything. I think I think that's the worst part about it though, because it's just like just listening to the story. Like we're an hour and, and fucking three minutes, and this shit is this shit is fucking great. And it's just like listening. It's like you 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 telling me, you know what I'm saying? You had a rough patch when you was down south, and it was just like all right, shit just kind of kept happening, and then you come back up here. To, yeah, to, to really like, to, life, to, 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 you, you know, know what I'm saying, saying? To, to try to do the right thing and you you you, you see a vision, I want to do this, and then you end up getting jammed up by some shit that you're not even involved in while you're in the process of trying to get the fuck out of there. Exactly. I think, I think, that that, I think great, that's, great summary. I think that's really the part that just fucking burns me like, God, like, it, it, it burns me that's like, when, when, I, when I see people out here that's like doing what they're supposed to do, like, you doing what you're supposed to do. I don't give I don't give a fuck about no past. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And exactly. long as you you know you wasn't no fucking child molester no shit like that. Like you doing what you're supposed to do now. Okay, I did this. I fucked up here, 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 and here. Now I want to do what I want to. I want to do what I'm supposed to do. You've done the research. You've done you've done the legwork. You know what I'm saying? You're getting the licenses. You're doing what you got to do, and then you get fucking shot off some monkey shit. You know what I'm saying? With the book, with the book open on the with desk. With the book open, chapter fucking eight or some shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No and then you get shot, and it's like now, and then you then you find out like you're gonna be paralyzed for the rest of your life, and then you yeah. can't fucking smell, dog. Like what the yeah. fuck? That's yeah. fucking me up, dog. Yeah, I can't smell, bro. Man. So yeah, bro. So it was just so imagine, man. Like my life literally. I can't imagine. I can't, dog. I, I, I in front honest, of me, man. I, I, like I can't imagine. Like I really, I can't even fathom this shit. And like I said, I've been to war, bro. Like I seen. Look, I I, I tell you some crazy. It keep it short. It really fucked me up to this day. It was a guy I knew. I didn't even know the nigga that well, you know what I'm saying? But every time I used to run into him in the internet cafe, and we used to chop it up like, man, you know, you're out there. Like, because he was one of the folks we used to shoot the illuminations for. We used to, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We used to protect the nigga. And it was the last, it was the last um, uh, patrol before we left the next day. And he said, man, last ride. I was like, man, just come on back, you know what I'm saying? And they went out. Next thing you know, we heard this huge explosion about 10 minutes later, 10, 15 minutes later. Uh, their Humvees that hit a tank mine. Tank mine and a Humvee will fuck that joint up. Wow. Like a tank, tank mine, mine. Yeah, a tank mine, it, it's big, it, it'll tear some shit up. So I didn't know who it was. I was just like, damn, hope my man, all right. And it's like, I didn't really, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really know him like that. And when we came back to the, came back to the to U.S., they got off kissing the pavement, all that good shit. And then we did this like big old like field day where the whole Marine Expeditionary Unit came back. And everybody was, you know, just kind of just congratulating us for making it back home, blah, 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 blah. And I saw this guy, he was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had he had the wheelchair, like, you know, with the electric one. Mm -hmm. And I looked, and I was like, oh, man, and I went, and I, and I turned around, and I was like, I went up to him, I was like, what the fuck? And he was like, last ride, bro. He was like, it was me. And he had, you know, he had his legs out, and he had pins and shit all in his legs, and he was like, bro. Said I can't feel shit. He was paralyzed. And he was, I mean, it was just he was all over the place. You know, he didn't have that specific. He yeah, was like, yeah. Oh, I can feel this leg, I can't feel this leg, and all this. And he was just telling me, and I was just like, I was just, I was just like, you know, trying to hold it in. I, I started tearing up. I was like, look, man, like I wish you the best, but I gotta get the fuck out of here. Like, and yeah, I, I I had I had to like leave the joint. <laughs> I was in the car, like fucking punching the stern wheel, like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I didn't know this dude from Adam or Eve, but to see him like that, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And it was just like, oh, you he saw him before normal. And like, he was country you know dude, saying? you know what I'm saying? All he talk about, oh, man, I got to get back to the house, man. We got to get, get fish fried, do the do the do the do. Talking about linking up and all that shit. And seeing him fucked up like that. And he was like, what am I going to do now? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that was the hardest part for me, too, man. Coming out, just getting, just making the adjustment. Because literally, my, literally, my life changed in an instant. Yeah. You know I mean? In an instant. Like, literally, in an instant. So, just making that adjustment and that, that mental adjustment to now, like, this is going to be It's my a life. battle, dog. Yeah. It's a fucking battle. Yeah. And still to this day. It's 12 years in. Hell yeah. And I won't say, like, I don't, I'm I'm great. You know? I mean, I'm, I'm doing, I'm blessed. I feel I'm so blessed, but I still have my days, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know you what I'm saying? You have your days where you're just like, I don't even feel like dealing with the shit. Yeah, yeah, man, and 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 you you just reminded me of a situation where, um, you know, I, I, it was like an I don't know if it's you know embarrassment or what it was like coming out the hospital and being in a chair now for the first time like people that used to know me before to see me yeah them interactions how was oh, that oh man that was tough bro 
was it tough because like people saw you and you felt like they felt bad for you or you just like 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 I don't like I like I'm tired of I'm tired of seeing me in this state. You know what I mean? Like, you know, just like I'm I'm tired of I'm tired of everybody feeling bad for me type deal. You know what I mean? Yeah, Yeah, just just that first interaction. Like I remember there was one time in Miami and I saw my boy that I knew from high school and he sees me like, man, what the like what the fuck you doing in the wheelchair? Like laughing and shit, like thinking I'm not funny, bro. Oh. No, but it wasn't in a sense of making fun of me. It was just like, what are you doing? Like, what are you like? Oh, up. like what the fuck happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like no, like get up. Like, what are you doing in a wheelchair? Like, get up. Like, cause he had no idea what had happened to me. You know, it's like coming across on like, oh, this motherfucker just playing around. Like, like get your ass up off that chair. Mm. But it's like, this is real life. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's tough. I remember this one time. I ain't gonna like, yeah, I was. I started smoking weed, right? And then I'm. No, ain't nothing wrong smoked, with. Ain't wrong with yo, a little cheap here and there. I smoked this. I, sm- I smoked this this tree with with my home girl. And this is like my first time back in Miami. You know what I'm saying? I'm visiting people, whatever. And um, I got so high, bro, that like I forgot that I was paralyzed. Like I basically thought I, you know, and then it just hit me like, oh shit, should I get my chair? Like it was just the beginning, like making that adjustment, man, to just I facing the music that this was. Real life. How long do you think it took you to mentally kind of get a grip on it? Like that, like this, this is me. Well, the the worst nights I would say was in ICU, when everyone would be gone. You know, what I'm by saying? yourself. Yeah. Get man. to thinking and shit. Get to yeah, thinking, to thinking was, in the future. Yeah, I do that like, shit all the time, nah, bro. Yeah, just just thinking. I just man, just I feeling like it was a nightmare, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like just a moment ago, I was planning my whole week. You know, what I'm. I'm doing my thing and getting ready to do this and that, you know, and then when I came out the hospital, like, just going back and, and thinking, like, how the heck am I going to do real estate now? You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, how am I going to flip houses from a shit. wheelchair? How am I going to do this? I need help now. Now I need to depend on people to help me help me out. I think the biggest thing, though, that helped me mentally was getting a car. So I got out the hospital in April, and I was driving again in a October. Wh- a what year? Uh, I got a, so I was in the hospital for two months. Okay. Two thousand nine. Okay. So I got shot in February. I was out the hospital by April. And like kind of fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I ICU know. was one month. Okay. And then another month in just rehab, just kind of learning how to put on your clothes and just like. So did you did you have like the electric wheelchair? You always had. Uh, no, I always, always had, had a manual. Yeah. yeah, you want that. Yeah. So so my injury level is T two. So for spinal cord injuries. They classify them two ways first. is incomplete or complete, right? So incomplete would be that your spinal cord is not severed. So think of it like an electric, like, n- you know, your central nervous system has the brain and has your cent- your spinal cord. Okay. That's That makes up your central nervous system. Okay. Then you have your peripheral nervous system, which makes up the nerves that go to your muscles and stuff like that, and to your arms. So it branches out from the the spinal cord. It branches out to the rest of your body, right? Okay. So they say, you know, that the central nervous system, like a brain injury or a spinal cord injury, that the that the cells don't repair itself. Um. So back to the spinal cord injury. So it being incomplete or incom or complete. Complete would be that it's severed. Okay. Right. So I have an incomplete injury. And then I have, and then they classify the injury by the by the level. So my injury level is T2. Okay. First, uh, so in your spine, you have your cervical spine, which is your neck area. Okay. That's made up of eight vertebrae. And then you have your thoracic spine, which it makes up uh, it's uh, 12 vertebrae. Okay. Right? That's like your rib cage and your chest. And then you have your lumbar and then your sacral. Right? So the higher you get hit on your spinal cord, or the higher you you know you have an injury on your spinal cord, the more you lose. Mm. So I'm T two. I'm already way up. So if I if the if the bullet would hit me a few vertebrae up, like two vertebrae higher or three, I would have lost function in my fingers. So at that point, I would have been a quadriplegic. So right now, I'm a paraplegic. Okay. So it affects two limbs. Awesome. Although it also affects all my core muscles because I'm a high thoracic. So I lose all my abs. My back. I used to have a nice little eight pack. You know what I'm saying? Eight piece. Yo, that's I th- that's probably the, what I missed the most, man. I had an eight piece. You know the boxers. Okay. Eight piece. Um, so I have a high thoracic injury. So it affects my balance. It affects my my uh, 
You know, my balance, bro. So how are you with alcohol? Are you, are you allowed to drink? I mean, you... you yeah, I don't take any medication. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah when I first got out of the hospital, of course, I was on prescribed all kind of medication and uh, nerve... I, I have... I live with chronic nerve chronic nerve pain. I have chronic pain. Like, I have pain all the time, 24-7. Like, right now, you look at me, in I'm pain in pain. Right now? All the time, like, brother. Like, excruciating or I'm just in pain? I learned to Like, irritating. It. It's like irritating pain. Like, it's pain. there. Mm. Like, if I pay attention to it... But if I'm like talking or whatever, I just you know. So you yeah. learn to live with, with you learn to live with pain, man. I've learned li- to live with pain. Mm-hmm. Um, they prescribe medication for it before. Yeah. You ever, I uh, you know when your foot falls asleep. Yeah. And you get those pins and needles. That's what I feel 24 hours a day. So I feel that right now. Fucking suck. It's like ants, like little, like I'm on fire. But you ain't give up on that. That's just crazy. I can say it with a smile. But like, you didn't give up you know on. But saying? you didn't give up on what you was trying to do, though. No, 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 not at all. So bro. okay, so but and you got a baby. And I got a baby. So you good to go? Yeah. You still good to go? Like, yeah, as far yeah. as I'm no. concerned. No, yeah, yeah. But see, I see through my journey, I've also met a lot of people that um that are going through what I'm going through, or even worse. I won't forget one time, man. I was at a, I was at therapy. And then I met this 17-year-old kid. No, 19-year-old kid that got shot when he was 17. He got shot, and his injury level was C2. So C2 is your is your neck, mm. bro. That's your second vertebrae from your brain. So he couldn't even breathe on his own, man. He was attached to a ventilator. He needed care 24 hours a day. And I was from a gunshot wound, bro. And um, you know what I'm saying? There was one incident incident in uh in, in Montgomery College when cuz after I got out of the hospital I tried to integrate and get back like that's one thing I just threw myself in as hard as I to immediately just as get back as hard as it was bro and as embarrassing as it was and as challenging as it was I overcame that you know what I'm saying to just integrate myself some people are you know they they like hermits bro they just they hide you know they um cuz it's hard man it's it's hard to adjust to a whole new life and and see people see let people see you at a vulnerable state, and I remember there was this girl that I met, and um, she was in a scooter, you know. So she's also she was she's physically disabled, and she was in a scooter, and she stops and sees me like, who's this new kid in a wheelchair? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like a community, like one, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, who's yeah, this yeah. new kid? So she comes and she approaches me and she asks me, and uh, she's like. Um, you know, what happened to you? And I tell her what happened to you, uh, what happened to me. And then she tells me, well, you know, just be grateful and know that you know what it is to run and to walk and to, you know, dance and to play. Um, I was born like this, you know? Mm. So I think she has cerebral palsy or something. But she was born like that. So there's always, you know, there's always other people, man. And that that helped me tremendously mentally, mentally too, to yeah, kind of like yeah. – push through and, and, and kind of overcome, um, you know, so it's, it's been a, it's been a hell of a ride, and, bro. And that's the thing, man. That's definitely all I wanted to know. It's like, you know, the mental aspect. It's like mentally, man. It's like, you know, I know, you, I know you're going to have your days, but you saying that like somebody was like, well, at least you got a chance. Like I was fucking born like this, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So those little nuggets, man, yeah. help me. They, they nudge me along the way to kind of keep uh, persevering, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and trying to stay strong. You know, there's always people that have it worse, man. I'm lucky that I'm still even alive. You know what I'm saying? Look, so man, you 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 blessed, man. It, so it, look, let me tell you something. I, and I, that's a word I don't even I don't even use a lot. Blessed, you're blessed, bro. You know what I'm saying? My wife would would love that I even said that to you. So you good? You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't say you good, but you know what I'm saying. You you've adjusted. You back moving, and yeah. then, and now now you fucking with the real estate game heavy. Yeah, that's all I do. I, I I manage to still make real estate work for me by being a little more creative. How you been? A, how you been able to to maneuver around as far as COVID? So, as far as COVID, it seemed like business is booming. My, I, look, I, I'm closing on a refi next week. There you, uh, yeah, yeah. Real estate is still good. Real estate is still moving. We're in one of the most competitive markets. This inventory is low. It's crazy right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely, you know, man. A lot, so, a lot of people, not enough houses. So what? Yeah. What is it? That's a, a, a seller's market. Yeah, sellers market. Because that means they can get it. They can get more for the house. Yeah, yeah, sellers market for sure. So it's a sellers market, man. Inventory is low, and I managed to get in the game. Um, I, I'm currently wholesaling property. So what happened was when I got out the hospital and I, I tried to go in and do this by myself, I would get my friend like, hey, let's go put out these signs, these we buy houses signs, and 
and you know I, I, I'll send out a batch of letters and I'll start getting calls but I really didn't start getting success until I met a mentor mm. so I met a mentor late 2010 okay so and I and I still pursued and got my real estate license so that that PSI nice. exam that I missed because I got shot I rescheduled that bitch you know what I'm saying a year later and still got it so I Checking got my license box, Got my mentor. He started teaching me the game, and then I started closing deals, bro. And um, at to date, I've closed over a hundred deals. Um, you know, I've, I've wholesaled a lot of houses. I also represent sellers and buyers with my real estate license in D.C. and Maryland. I'm licensed both in D.C. and Maryland. You don't want to go to Virginia? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, <I'm saying laughs> nobody want to fuck with Virginia for real. So what? What's your wish? So what's your area that you prefer? What, what, I, what, what, I like what's D.C. What's man. your D.C. Your easy sale? Yeah, it's it's competitive as heck though. Cause you know DC, cause my DC niche changed, man. Yeah, yeah. So my niche, my niche, right? For what I do in real estate, I work. Uh, get, I get off market properties and I sell them to investors. I flip them to investors. Mm -hmm. So I wholesale properties, and I also am a licensed agent. So I try to structure a deal where I source a deal, I'll get it under contract, I will wholesale the property, meaning flip the property to an investor. They do the renovation. And then they'll give me the listing on the back end after they finish it. Mm. And then uh, with my license, I could go ahead and list it on the market. I've also done uh, rehabs uh, with my brother. My brother's a full-time contractor and has a great company. Okay. Does great work. So we do business your together brother as doing, well. Brother doing some good shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My Shout out to the thing, brother, man. man. He's a uh, he's a great, great contractor. Good stuff. Uh, so that's, that's good money, too, man. So we that's do, we do deals together, man. And, um, and that's I've been blessed to be able to... Uh, participate in real estate seminars and share my story and my success story and i've also been able to be a coach and a mentor and teach other people to get started in real estate that want to learn and just try to you know you know try to pull people people up man you know reach behind me and pull people up because that's what they did for me you know what i'm saying and i'm still trying to learn and be better every day and now i'm a husband i'm a father and you know, my, my wife is, is an angel, you know what I'm saying? Like like I said, she, she got back in contact with me. Um, I think I told you this off camera. She got back in contact with me um, when I was in the hospital because I know her my whole life mm -hmm. as a child. She was in Miami too or she was always here? No, she, she was, she's from Dominican Republic. Okay. So my father used to always take us as kids to DR and I used to play with her, you know what I'm saying? That's like, like you know, from the neighborhood and we grew up together, but I stopped going to DR when I moved to Miami and I, I, the last time I was there was when I was 15. And then when she found out I got wow. shot, um, you know, while I was still in the hospital, she actually reached out to me through social media, you know, and um, and that's how we got back in contact. And, and we got hit it off since then. Yeah, bro, she's been my angel, man. a good man. woman, man, good and, woman. And shout, I, shout out to the wives, man. Yeah, Listen, shout out to the good I tell you right now, there. man, like, I just, I, I always put my wife up, man. Like, when they be like, oh, virtual school is my wife. Yeah. Like, I, I always, I just... I, I I had to get my I ca I can't give my wife enough credit, man. You know she she's definitely se she saw me, you know like like at my prime of my worst. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like we we, we was just dating. Yeah, you know, she worked in Wheaton Mall too. She worked in Deb. Oh yeah. Okay. Two thousand. I met her three days after I got out of the service. I got out. Wow. I got out June fifth. I met her June eighth. Wow. And um. You know, I met on Facebook. I was on Facebook. I was like, well, I'm going to be home, so I, I need to try to line something up. So I was like, I was was up in about 20, 20, 25 different ladies. You only want to respond back. <laughs> and it was really just a friend like, well, you look, all right, you should see what's up. So I went to meet her at a job, and we had been together ever since. But she saw me drunk. She saw me drunk early. Hmm. And, you know, it was just me beefing with my own man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Awesome. This nigga was just driving too fast. Slow the fuck down, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, my car was, you know, he just drove. And, you know, I'm a Montgomery County dude. She's from Southeast, D.C. And, you know, it was different. But I was just like, I, I, I fucked with her. You know, I, just, I knew from jump. I was like, yeah, you know, I was, I was like, yeah, you I got know. the right one, you know. Well, the only, I mean, the thing was, it's like I had just got out of the service. So it's like I was in North Carolina. So I was like, yeah, I want to date her, but I wasn't ready to bun her immediately. You know what I'm saying? But. I had already kind of known from jump, like after I had the incident in front of her, and then she kind of still stuck around. I was like, "Yeah, we probably won't be together." But then it was just like, just kept having incidents, kept having incidents, kept having incidents. Got my car shot up, you wow. know. What I mean, I I, really? I I could be fucking dead. Yeah, I was wow. look. I was in. I was in. I don't know if you remember the the, the other Jaspers used to be in Crofton. 
on 301. It was the Jaspers over. It, it, right, oh, now, it, right now, right uh, now, it's. I told you I used to be in the, on 14th Street, baby. That's what you it, well, right now it's it's called it's called Fat Daddy's Crab okay. Shack or some shit, right by the Croft and Bowling Alley. Now, and it was a club back then. You got okay. the Jaspers and Largo, and then you had that one there. And I was in there with a buddy of mine, and you know this is when you know we throwing them back. I was drinking white liquor. I ain't drank white liquor since. Hmm. And um, I was like, man, I'm about to do some drinks. So I had bought me two shots, and I bought him two shots. And he was like, oh, I don't take shots. So I'm like, nigga, I just bought this shit. The fuck? So I was like, all right, well, it got to get drinks. So I drank all four of them joints. Wow. I'm in that joint, sluggish. Mm-hmm. And I'm in that joint just trying to dance with whoever, like, uh, you know what I mean? I guess I ended up going up on somebody's chick, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, uh, my bad, but I'm already here. So they threw me yeah. out the club. And then they threw him out because he was with me. So I'm like, he's like, well, I'm going to drive. I was like, I got it. So I'm trying to leave. And it's like a black Mercedes that kind of halfway blocking me. So I'm beeping the horn like, bro, I'm trying to fucking leave. So he like, nigga, I move when I want. I'm like, okay. So I was like, I asked you nicely. I got in the car, put the bitch in drive, and rammed his car out oh, and left. So my man fuck you doing? I was like, I told a nigga to move. Fuck you. Da, da, da. We arguing. So we get maybe two stoplights down. He's like, pull over. I was swerving, just drunk. Soon as we switched seats, he closed the door. The dude pulled up. was like, bah, 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 bah. Shot the whole car. Wow. And he just ducked my head down. And I'm sitting there. He started flooring this shit. I'm trying to throw up. I'm throwing up on the window because the window oh. ain't, my window don't work. Oh, man. And I woke up the next morning, man, and he left me in the car. Windows was broke. Parked in front of my mother's house. He lived in the street, walked home. Called me about 20 times. I got up. He was like, he said, I can't focus with though. You almost got me killed. Mm. I ain't seen him to this day. Wow. I don't think we beefing, but he's just like, yeah. you know, I don't think we could do that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I just think it just took a while, man. I kept having a mental moment. That's why I always mention mental, man, because it's like, we don't talk about that shit. We don't talk about mental the mental health. Is important, we don't talk bro. about the mental health a lot. And it's like, I don't want to just pin that shit on veterans and all that because I'm a veteran. And all. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that because I, like that, I feel like that's the thing now. It's like, oh, veterans, veterans, veterans. Yeah, it's a lot of us veterans out here that's fucked you, up. Would you, you think you, you have some form of PTSD? Hell yeah, I'm 90% yeah. disabled. Yeah. Oh, man, I, I, don't, I, don't snap, I don't snap into it like that. But my thing is, it's like, I always think about them days where I know I contracted it. You know what I'm saying? I always think about them days when I just completely shut down. I don't want to be bothered. Mm-hmm. I always think about them days where it's like, I need to do anything. I just need to get the fuck out of the house. That's why it's like, for me, the quarantine, it's like, it's cool because I'm home with my family and it's safe, but like, I'm a runner. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I'm, I'm used to waking up 5, 6 a.m., getting on the fucking train, going on my Instagram, doing a captain's log. That's how this, this whole thing, this whole thing orchestrated from my Instagram stories. Mm-hmm. This whole thing started from, I'll be on a train, captain's log, look at this fucking weirdo. Or me just talking about a fucking game or something like I had like, I had like 100, 200 people who was waiting for that shit every morning. If I didn't get, I get a message like no captain's log today. And then it's like when we got quarantined, we was home and I had to apply for a job and I didn't get it. And I was fucked up. And the wife was like, where's the fucking podcast? Hmm. She's like, where is it at? And I went right on Amazon, bought a bunch of fucking random shit, different cheap mics and all that. And I put it in the room. And painted the fucking room, same color as this, different mm-hmm. wallpaper, and just started doing it. And sometimes that's all it takes, bro. Take action. And all, you can't and, think about it too much. Yeah, and, and and it's like I just felt like it was just my duty to just highlight as many people as I knew. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so it's like I don't know you that well, but I know Glenn and I love Glenn. And Glenn was like, man, because initially I wanted Glenn to come over here with me. You seen you seen me before my injury. I did, I did, I did, yeah. I did. It was it's it's it's, it's faint, yeah, yeah, but I did. It's faint, yeah. And I told too. Glenn, I was I was like, Glenn, you gotta come. He was like, bro, my man got a lot of shit to say. You don't need me on here. And I was like, no, I didn't, dog. Like, you really, really, really like you told me some wild shit, dog. And it's like, but it's like I look at you now, and you still did. What you put the work in to do? Yeah, bro. You that's, still I think that's out. a success yeah, story yeah, that, you know, that's in the itself. Crazy. In itself, obviously, I'm still trying to evolve. I'm big on growth, man. I'm big on yeah. personal growth. I'm big on uh, just trying to be a better man today than I was yesterday. But also look back yesterday and be like, shit, I come a long way. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, it's bro. like, like I said, I've met a lot of people in my situation that even years into the injury still don't even drive. 
Like, bro, that's the that's the first step. You gotta get came over this bitch by yourself. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, it's, and it was, I was just like, okay, when he gets here, it's like I want to be helpful, but I don't want to be like too helpful. I don't want to be too helpful. You yeah. was like, when you was like, well, no, I got it. I'm like, damn, he putting the whole shit. I was like, okay, okay. When you come out, I was like, well, I got the steps, so I'm just gonna take the grass and you put the bitch on two wheels. I was like, <laughs> honestly, this nigga yeah. don't need my fucking help. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But I it, may need your help getting back up. Oh no, no, I got you, I got you, I got you. But yeah, I try to do as much as I can, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just like, I was like. Well, I was like, I just want to make sure I do what I can do, but not making it seem like I'm being like, you know, overly. Yeah. You know but what you I'm got saying? those people though. You got those people, man. Oh, you gonna have some, them people. Some etiquette, you know what I'm saying? Don't come up behind a wheelchair user and just start pushing them. Yeah, That's yeah, a no, yeah. No, yeah. I, a no. I was no. like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just hold the shit until he say let go, and I'm gonna let go. He was like, I got to break on. Like, all right, I'm not touching. Yeah, it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. But that's good though. Listen, man. Listen. We didn't even we didn't even get to get to a lot of this, you know what I'm saying? We didn't even get to yeah, get to it, a but lot, it was man. just like I mean, I could I could just run. We we we, we could talk all, all, all night, day, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's a, it's a lot to talk but about. But I bro. first of all, I just I just want to let you know I appreciate you, man. Like, you know what no, I'm saying? I appreciate you, you having like me, bro. you was, you were my first guest that I, I didn't really know from a can of paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I yeah, and I knew it was I knew it was going to be a good episode, man, because that I think it's it's organic, you know what I'm it saying? Is, it's it genuine. Is, it is. And you just got on here, you know what I'm saying? You spoke you you talked about what you talked about. I didn't even I didn't even have any talking points. So I ain't even think like, well, I'm gonna. But talk that's about what I do though, nigga. Like, I be, I be right, I be, I be right, like I be writing that shit right random. before the episode. I be like, I'm gonna write this shit before yeah, the episode. But that's how you want it though. I, I don't let it flow. If I have questions that I wrote on fucking Sunday or Saturday when I told you the first time, it's like that. I may not feel the same way Wednesday night. You know what I'm saying? Which is when I record. But um, man, you doing good work. You doing, you doing good, man. You know what I'm saying? Real estate is is big business right now. It's the way of the world. Everybody wants some fresh shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what's your plans for the future? What, what's your plan for 2021? For 2021, it just ramp up, man. It just uh, it just get better. I'm trying to add another skill though. I'm um, uh, I'm I'm learning how to trade. So you know, trade. What I'm you mean trade. like stocks and shit? Yeah, like forex. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying how to read the charts and shit like that. Candlesticks. You know, that's that's you know that's something Support that's something that we, you know something we don't talk about in the we house. We gotta man. we gotta learn. Like I'm big on just adding skills. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta learn how to have skills, and and especially in today's world, man. Look, look at what everyone's going through with COVID, bro. There's so many people out of work right now. Shit's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people hurting up. that didn't spend the time to learn a skill. And it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of jobs out there that you can work from home. There is. It's a lot there of is, jobs. There bro. is. There is. But people gotta take initiative. But at the same time, though. Don't just rely on a job. Learn a skill that you will carry on always. You know what I'm saying? Like real estate, you you, you could be the guy that closes one deal a year or a hundred deals a year, but it's a skill that I'll always have that I can always improve on. You know what I'm saying? And I can know I can fend for myself, and no one will take that away from me. Listen, you know, man, look, I, look, I wish you the best of luck, man. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. We round the corner. Yeah, you know what sure. I'm saying. So we definitely got the link up. The wife had asked. She's like, "Is he bringing his wife?" I was like, "I don't know," because I mean, she, you know, she she was gonna prepare to kind of entertain type deal. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? She asked me every week, like, "What time are they coming?" I'm like, "It's the same time every week, boo. Seven, seven thirty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But well, we're yeah. gonna wrap it up, man. Yeah, um, yeah, no, for sure, man. There's there's a ton we can still bro, talk about, I man. Know, but if, I know, I know. See how the you know your audience and listen, and listen, listen, listen. Like it. Just, uh, this, and this, we give them a, we give them a part two later this on. This the man. one. This is the one thing before I wrap. This is the one thing that I used to really harp on on my first like fifteen episodes, man. You know, this is episode twenty nine. I used to always worry about like, oh, who's listening? Who's listening? I used to go to Anchor. I used to check the downloads like every fucking thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go to YouTube and I'd be refreshing the shit. It's like, man, the thing with the podcast game is, man, it's the long, it's the it's the tortoise race. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, unless you were Joe Rogan, you were fucking Mike Tyson, you were a uh, uh, Gilly. It's all you, about delivering you, content. You were Gilly bro. the Staying Kid. You know what consistent. I'm saying? Like, I'm not a celebrity, so yeah. it's like. You got to take the slow road. You just got to yeah. keep putting out the good shit and the people yeah. will come. You know what I'm saying? So For it's sure. like, that's my thing. It's like, you know, like they have consistency, things. Consistency. like, yeah, it's definitely consistency. It's consistency. It's good content. It's not taking breaks. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's. Discipline. It's discipline. Definitely. It's, it's not, it's not change. Don't change who you are from the beginning because you may think that you see another successful person doing this. So it's like, well, this is what they doing. Maybe I need to do it. Like. If you're gonna, this is this is for anyone who's thinking about podcasting, like pick something in the beginning and fucking stick to it. If you if you want to talk about games or you want to talk about fucking crime or you want to talk about houses, or you want to talk about relationships, you pick something and you fucking stick with it. Like if you as soon as you start changing it up, 
you're going to be looking for all, you're going to be looking for a whole new audience from, from the motherfuckers who was following you from day one. When I first started, my first, my first, I dropped two episodes. I dropped, I dropped, I dropped the podcast on Father's Day. And I did an introduction, which was short, which was, I was nervous as fuck. It shit sound crazy. And I did a Father's Day, which is me highlighting the dads, you know what I'm saying? Like, like my dad wasn't really around me, so I, t- I take this dad shit serious. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like a generational curse that I'm putting That's in my son, and like, look, you will do what the fuck you're supposed to do, great, regardless I mean, of what's going on. Hey, man, you're you breaking generational curses. Exactly. the like, first step, bro. That's like, like, even to even just to recognize, yeah, 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 like yeah you're doing yeah, that's yeah. big ups. To I like you, I, t- I, t- I, t- I take this. That's why it's like when I hear why I hear you say, "Oh, you're a new parent." I'm like, "Welcome to the club, bro." I take the dad shit serious. You know what I'm saying? I take it real serious. Like I put the dads up here. The wives will always be at the top, but yeah. I put the dads is just right there knocking on the door. You know what I mean? But it's like once I started, like this is my trend. I would never like I would never not highlight that shit. I would never not highlight who I bring on the show or what they do. Like, everyone who comes on the show has a purpose. It's like, okay, this is what you do. This is what you got going on in your life. You know what I'm saying? You had this incident, and you're doing real estate. So you had this incident, adapt, overcome, and you're still doing what you wanted to do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Regardless. I just adjusted, bro. You just, yeah, Life is exactly. about making small adjustments. You exactly. Know what I'm like, the minute that I lose that vision, I'll shut this whole fucking shit down and paint this room back white. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But I know you're doing a great thing, man. I appreciate you giving me a platform. And I think just a takeaway from this is just, um, you know, keep your head up, stay strong, have faith, you know, have a vision, have a purpose. Yeah. And and know that is that. You know, there's gonna be a better day tomorrow, man. You you have you have a you have a fresh day to start tomorrow, and you could, if you, today wasn't great, tomorrow's another day. You going you gonna get a you gonna get a couple of great you days out saying? of the week, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So man. just in case somebody might be out there looking for a house, you know what I'm saying? Where where can they find you? Yeah, I mean, you could get me on Facebook, Jonathan De La Cruz. That's J O N A T H A N, De La Cruz, D E L A C R U Z. Just friend request me there, and then we'll connect. All right, y'all, man. Episode twenty nine, man. I'm still coming up with the name, man. But listen, we just dropped some. We just dropped some real shit on y'all, man. We dropped some gems. All right. If you didn't take nothing from this, man, just unfucking follow me. But we're gonna wrap it up. Episode twenty nine, man. John, man, I appreciate you coming through. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you, you coming appreciate to fuck you. with me, man. All right. Appreciate you, Captain. Out. Let's do it again.